Let's go to number two. This is that one Christian who asks, how should we explain 2 Kings 2, 23 through 25? I had somebody bring it up to me and was unsure of how to answer them. On the surface, it seems problematic. What can I say to them? Thanks. Um, I, okay, actually, I might know which, which passage this is. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 23 to 25. Yeah, this is um this is about the the she bear. <laughs> okay, all right. Let me let me read it to you guys. Here it is on your screen. Um, this is about uh. Okay, I'll back up just a little bit. Um, Elisha, right? He's sort of demonstrating through doing miracles that that God's power is upon him, like you know, like it was on Elijah. Um, verse nineteen it says, then the men of the city said to Elisha, please notice the situation of this city is is pleasant as my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the ground barren. And he said, bring, t uh, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. Okay. He does a miracle. Um, and then verse 23, uh, after this miracle, it, which does happen, it says he went up there from there to Bethel. He went up from there to Bethel. And as he was going up the road, some ewes came from the city and mocked him and said, go up, you bald head, go up, you bald head. That's interesting. <laughs> they're, they're just making fun of him. Um, now, what I want us to understand, well, let me back up. I'll explain the context after I read the next couple of verses. So he turned around and looked at them and pronounced a curse on them in the name of the Lord. And two female bears, she bears here, came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the youths. Now, it doesn't say they're we're only 42, but 42 get mauled. Uh, then he went from there to Mount Carmel. And from there, he returned to Samaria. So, um, there's several things to be asked about this passage, but let me just acknowledge a few things right off the cuff. So we know the context, these guys are mocking a prophet and they're mocking him being a prophet. So he's a representative of God amongst a pretty rebellious group of people called the Israelites. And they're mocking him in his prophetic role. They're not just making fun of him for being bald there. When they say, go up, you bald head, go up, you bald head. This has connotations, religious connotations, even the phrase go up, right. As opposed to saying, go down or something like that. There's, this is another study you'd have to do. Um, I know uh, one scholar, James Bijan did, did a whole little piece on this, on the phrase that go up in this passage. And I thought it was a pretty interesting thing that he drew out. So, um, it's a, it's a religious mockery of a prophet of God. What they're doing is they're, they're mocking Yahweh's messenger, right? They're mocking God's messenger. These youths are mocking God. So he, so it makes sense that he, he pronounces a curse upon them and their people of Israel in Israel mocking God's messenger. So judgment comes upon them. This is part of their, they're into the covenant. This is what happens. You obey blessings. You disobey curses. Moxie's debating whether she's going to join us for the stream or not. She's thinking about it. And there she is. Hold on. I'll show you, I'll show you my cat and then I'll explain to you that. Wow. They were really zoomed in. <laughs> There's her back. All right. Well, we'll, we'll come back to her when she figures out how she wants to sit. Um, but here's the, here's the dilemma on this passage. It's really what people focus on is youth, the term youths. And I have done word studies on this. So I'm not speaking just off the top of my head here. Um, this term can apply to children and it can apply to other people who are seen as immature, right? Where it's kind of a derogatory sin. Like you go, look at this kid, but you're not, He's not a kid, but you call him a kid because you're, it's derogatory. You're saying he's immature. This is how, um, uh, uh, who is it? Um, Solomon is referenced in, I think it's first Kings. I think it's, I think it's first Kings. How Solomon is referenced as he is a youth. He is a child, but he's ordained as the King. Right. And <clears throat> I think it's David actually is the one who calls him this. So we have here in the same composition, first and second Kings is really one book. It's just separated because of size. It wouldn't fit on one scroll. Right. Um, we have the same word being used of an adult. Ah, and so you find out this isn't as some atheists would, I've, I've heard online atheists take this passage. It's not a group of like seven year olds mocking, uh, mocking the prophet cause he's bald and they're giggling at him. Rather, this is a, a group of immature individuals, probably more older males, 19, 25, they're older males and they're mocking him because they're opposed to the prophet of God. There's religious reasons for this. So he pronounces a curse on them. <clears throat> so it all hangs on the, de the definition of this word use. And it is definitely used in ways, um, to suggest older than just a little kid and it used even in the same composition of Kings, I believe for that purpose. Um, or maybe it was second Samuel, but I think it was Kings. Also, in addition to this, 
um, we have context that suggests these people are older. It's not really, it doesn't make a lot of sense to think that there is a gang of 40 plus seven year olds running around in Israel, mocking prophets. Like that's not likely. What's much more likely is that it's, it's literally a gang of older people who have religious opposition to Elisha. And that's why they're mocking him, right? Seven-year-olds don't generally have like these strong religious opinions. <laughs> so, all right. Um, 